How's it going folks? Finally managed to make a little bit of progress on the aquaponics system here so I thought I'd do a little bit of an update. Just quickly though, behind me here is a um, curl of pipe. A couple of people asked what that was. I did try to make up a little bit of a solar heater out of a curl of pipe and run water through it um, slowly for the other aquaponics system. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, it was just a bit of a no-go. But I thought I'd just mention that because I have had a few people ask. Um, rightio, now the aquaponics system. Well, it's um, basically been a bit of slow going, mainly because I've been preoccupied with other bits and pieces at the moment. Um, had a few issues with the aquaculture system, uh, but I'll do that in another um, clip totally. And also too, it's probably really loud, right in your ear, I'd take it. Um, I've been having to get the soil patch ready as well for our spring crops, and not only that, also too, trying to squeeze in another crop of brassicas. So anyway, that's what I've been up to just quickly. But I'll give you a bit of a look at um, how I've worked out some of this plumbing on here and a couple of changes that I've made since the um, last two vlogs or vlogs. So here we go. To begin with, I've gone ahead and put some of the veggie net up over the system here. Mainly because, as you can see, we're getting a lot of leaves from the tree that's behind it there. It's a butterfly leaf tree and it was just falling all down into here and making one heck of a mess to work around. So I've just put a bit of um, that veggie netting up for now and later on in the year we'll end up doing the shade cloth of course uh, to keep the tanks cool and all that but not really needed at the moment. On the system itself, um, the fish tanks. A couple of people pointed out that I had the plugs coming through, pushing the plugs in from the outside so I went, pulled them out, pushed them in from the inside. Made easy enough fix to do. Um, down the bottom there I had to change the direction of that tap there because it was coming straight out and it would interfere trying to um, connect a pump into there would be a bit hard so I've just got him out on a straight 45 the other one's got the tap on it and they're pretty much all right to go and fill up with water other than I'm not too sure whether I'm going to put taps or sorry valves ball valves in the um, down pipe into the 90 mil um, drain that runs into the filters I, I can't really see a, a time when I'll need to turn these off here if I want to isolate a fish tank all I pretty much will need to do is just pull out the slow pipe work or the solids lifting out um, outlet pipe work from the top there and stick a 50 millimeter end cap just over the bit of pipe that sticks through that uni seal there and that'd be enough to um, isolate that tank so I'm not I don't really know whether it's worth the $14 or the $30 plus the extra fittings um, to have ball valves on there down here we have the filters themselves um, actually just finished setting them up right now I have made a bit of a change to this um, end bit of pipe work that runs into the radial flow as you can see, I've got a um, Y fitting, and on the end of it, I've got a screw-on cap, just to make it easier uh, to flush the water through. The same cap's on the other end there, just so I can flush the water through if any solids do accumulate in there. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll be a, a, a big issue, but yeah, it's better to have backups just in case. Um, the filters, might actually hop around the other side, just to give you a better look at them. So there we go. We have the radial flow filter on the end there, then we have the moving bed biofilter, complete with all the little plugs. And also to, on the end here we have sump tank number one, that will flow through this fitting here, down into sump tank number two, which is the, um, the sump tank we're using at the moment. That's still going to stay in place. And some water will also be redirected from this sump tank, via that hole over there on the other side with the uni seal in it that's a 50 mil hole uh, it'll take a 50 mil pipe that'll go out to some grow beds that will be located where the existing fish tank is there that's the plan for now so um, I'll give you a bit of a look I suppose we'll start up the other end with the radial flow filter just to let you know as well um, none of the pipe work is glued in yet uh, glued into the radial flow filter mainly because I might have to make a few adjustments yet I might have to move these barrels or their filters around a bit and I don't want to have to um, yeah, basically cut and waste fittings and that sort of thing so down here actually I can show you from here uh, down the bottom I've got a couple of taps I've got a tap on the radial flow filter that's to take solids out a tap on the moving bed biofilter with a nifty little um, drain assembly on the other side. I actually um, made up a bit of a clip showing them by themselves. And down here we have another tap uh, in the base of the sump tank. So what that basically means is I can drain all these sump tanks out um, if need be, or will filters and sump tanks out if need be. So it's just a handy little thing to have. Also too, um, I'll just show you this down there. 
I didn't want to keep drilling holes all the way through these tanks um, so what I thought I'd do is I've grabbed a 40 mil uh, end cap like the end caps I've made all the plugs out I've drilled it out and I've actually inserted a 25 mil uni seal in there and then I've got the tap going through that so I just thought I'd get a little bit creative that I, I needed the tap pretty much all where that plug hole was so um, yeah, I figured well instead of drilling another hole I'd do that. Um, I did have to cut a little bit of the uni seal off um, just at the end where it flares out But yeah, it works perfectly. So it's a uni seal within an end cap within a uni seal into the filter So a little bit of nifty plumbing there So these lids on the filters and um, the sump tank here They've got two parts the main lid and they've also got a little viewing port, which I think is absolutely fantastic what we have is a 150 mil stormwater drain and Inside that we have the stand pipe for the radial flow filter, that's a 90 mil. I might consider um, changing out this pipe work into something larger. We'll just, we'll just run the system and see what the flow rates are like. Uh, the stand pipe's off to one side at the moment. Like I said, pipe work's not glue, so it sort of isn't um, set up in situ properly. Um, I'll just hit the camera with that lid. So that's what it looks like inside. The stand pipe is, um, this is just sitting inside the fitting there. It's a twin 45. And down there I've zapped in a 316 stainless steel screw and that's just holding the whole thing in place. I don't think I'm going to have issues with the standpipe, uh, standpipe flying out. Down the bottom there, that's the drain fitting going out to the tap and this is the fitting that'll be down there. So that's pretty much all it for the radial flow. Over here I have my funky um, reduced diameter pipe that's coming through from the moving bed biofilter. Um, I've also done a clip on that showing different ways on how to fit the 90mm stormwater pipe just because it's a little bit um, harder to work with than the thicker wall pressure pipe. So anyway, that pipe there will take the water through to the moving bed biofilter, which is on the other side of this pipe work here. Um, just to show you what I've done, I have a uni seal going in from the outside into here, and that uni seal there is actually pushed in from the inside of the moving bed biofilter here. So I'll just pull the fitting out here. Um, the uni seal was put on the inside and this pipe work was pushed through that way. Smaller diameter on the other side, larger diameter here, so it can take this T-piece. This is just your normal stormwater T-piece. The water's going to come through here, down the bottom, um, be released into the base, and the water will travel up through the moving bed bi um, biomedia, or through the, through the biomedia, sorry, and then out through this fitting here, um, and then out into the sump tank. So I had to make these screens up. I'll show you this one first. Uh, these are all being held together by 316 stainless as well. Down the base here, another one. Um, I've basically gone around and zapped a whole heap of 8mm holes all the way around and also drilled the end cap out as well. Uh, that was a load of fun. So that's where the water will be coming through. With this fitting here, all I've done is grab the T. I've um, glued some end caps on little sections of pipe and I've just screwed them on for now, uh, mainly because if any, the other systems are anything to go by, this may collect a bit of gunk on the interior and I might want to just um, unscrew them and, yeah, hose it out. Um, so, yeah, that then goes into there, zapped in place with a 316 stainless steel screw. And that goes through into the sump tank, just through this pipe work here. Again, um, the uni seals on the inside of the moving bed biofilter. It's pushed through Uniseal, pushed in from the outside of the sump tank and through here. So we have a restricted opening. It's, it's not a lot to restrict the flow, I don't think. And that's just going to splash down into the sump tank here. Down the base of the sump tank, I've got one of my um, fancy little filters down there. Main reason I've done that is if I have um, biomedia come through here for whatever reason, something goes on, um, that fitting there will strain it out when I pump the water out of here nothing worse than blowing up your pump because it's got um, biomedia in it so it's just a little um, safety precaution and yeah then the water goes out through this fitting here into the sump tank or through this fitting here out into some grow beds which you'll see in a later vlog this vlog's getting rather long sorry about that guys um, what I've got here is just an end cap that I've cut a little bit out with a jigsaw and what that does is that l raises the level of water in here so enough water will get to go out to this um, grow bed system out uh, this way before it goes over there and into the sump tank. Water from the sump tank will then be pumped out back to the fish and also to other grow beds down the other side. A little bit complicated, not the run of the mill system I know. So if I want I can whack an end cap on there 
and whack an end cap on there and I can isolate this, isolate this from the grow beds and have it run separate as a fish farm. If I want to treat um, the greenery over there or the jungle with some neem and I don't want the azadectarin to come through and poison the fish because it will at certain levels, I can isolate this. The biomedia in here is going to be enough to keep the bacteria colony going and I can run it as a separate um, fish farm. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, and yeah, there'll just be a pump on that fitting there that'll pump back up to the fish tank. So, there you go, that's pretty much what where I'm up to at the moment. Um, I know it's a bit of a long vlog, but there's a bit to get through there. Um, I was hoping to have it all glued up so I could do a bit of a trial run or a bit of a wet run um, the weekend just passed, but yeah, things just happened. Had two lots of people come through and have a bit of a look at the um, garden. So, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Daniel and family. So, yeah, it was, it was a great weekend. I got a lot of work done in the soil patch, but yeah, you don't want to hear about that. So, well, there you go. There's a bit of a vlog, uh, a bit of a look at um, how we've gone with the um, build. Also, too, just to let you know, um, we've started to sell a few bits and pieces, odds and ends, through our blog. Oh, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, might even be able to put a thumbnail on here. Um, just uni seals, trying to make them cheap for backyarders here in Australia. Yeah, I'll pretty much all leave it there. Any comments, questions, suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I will get back to you. Other than that, sorry for the long one and I'll catch you later. Cheers folks. Just quickly, just thought I'd show you these. Bianca bought me these, one of the best presents she's ever gotten me. Um, they're a must for working in deep tanks and filters and that, the drums. I've got a 316 stainless steel screw down the base there. I don't know if you can work out that little black dot, but there's no way I could pick that up normally. This thing here, not a problem pick him up and there we go so makes life a lot easier if you can get yourself a pair of these i think these cost what under 10 bucks six bucks six bucks so fantastic um they're not stainless all the way through though so yeah you've got to keep them out of the water robert there you go